Hi, my name is Zach Morgenstern, joined as always by silent co-host Ludwig von B. And today we're going to be talking about this record called Hypnotic Eye. So I showed that I got this out at the library in my recent record and CD haul video. This is the last album that Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers ever recorded together. However, it was a few years before Tom's shocking death, so it's not exactly comparable to something like Black Star or uh, You Want It Darker. It just happens to be the last album. So what kind of music was the last thing that Tom gave the world? Today, I'm going to find out. The first track on this album is called American Dream Plan B. And it really feels like familiar themes for the petty song songwriting canon. It's about that underdog who won't back down, you know, no, I won't back down. And it also feels like it's an answer to American Girl. American Girl being one of Tom Petty's oldest iconic hits. And it's about the idea that there surely is a dream for all Americans. And, you know, American Girl already ends in a kind of doubtful place. Whereas this song is sort of accepted that the American dream isn't really real. So the singer is just going to make up his own standards for the American dream that are equally jo joyful, but a lot less ambitious. As for the sound, it has a bassy, crunchy guitar going, but Petty's vocals are still very clear on it. So just like a lot of the Tom Petty songs, it's this perfect you know, cousin between more singer-songwriter music and hard rock music. It has the energy of hard rock music without having what I don't like about it, which is often that the vocals are too blurred into the mix. Uh, Tom Petty sings as cleanly as can be. The next song on the album is called Fault Lines, and again, I like how you can hear all the elements of this song very clearly, including Petty's voice. This time the song reminds me a bit of another one of his earlier hits, You Got Lucky, just in the ache that you hear in Tom Petty's voice. Uh, the guitar solo in this one also has a very clean sound, and the drums are very simple and intense. Uh, you know, it's an emotive, minor, you know, mid-speed rocker. I, it strikes me as a slightly stylistically as a stronger version of the song from the Full Moon Fever album, Love is a Long Road. So the next song on the album is called Red River. And I like the chorus because when it starts, it just sounds like a verse and then it just has a nice little rise on the end. I just like that natural flow from verse to chorus. It's interesting to listen to. Now this could be a song that has a deeper meaning or it could just be a sort of fantasy about a hippie spiritual woman. It's kind of notable that despite being this hippie figure, she seems to have specific ties to Christianity. Uh, there's a reference to she's got a 3D Jesus in a picture frame. So that can mean all kinds of things. It could be serious. It could be not so serious. Petty likes to uh, talk about the American ideal. Uh, in Free Falling, he talks about the good girl who loves her mama and Jesus too. So, you know, maybe all of his characters start out nominally as Christians, even if their faith isn't all that deep. The next song is called Full Grown Boy. It has a bluesy jazz sound to it. It's kind of a funny song that that title for uh, Petty E to be singing at this point in his career because, you know, he's into his 60s at this point. So it doesn't really seem like the point he'd be singing a coming of age song. And, you know, the lyrics are vague enough that, you know, maybe it's not about Petty. Maybe it's a song about a character because he absolutely does that. Not all of his songs are about him as we're prone to assume with singer songwriters. Some of them are about characters, uh, particularly the song Rebel. Uh, I, f I feel like this song has an interesting sound to it uh, because it has a laid-back jazzy feel and one might expect a coming-of-age song to be more angsty, more yearning, more powerful, but he just refers to a cat free in the grass. So it's sort of like he's, he's coming of age in this very relaxed way and uh, if he's indeed talking about himself, he's coming of age in a late point in life, but it's, it's not a very dramatic coming of age, it's a subtle coming of age. Uh, it has a groovy sound and, dare I say, a hypnotic sound. The next song on the album is called All You Can Carry. It kind of strikes me as a jaded sequel to Bob Dylan's A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. Uh, essentially, it's about a man who has some kind of vision, sees all these, uh, you know, upsetting or telling things, but also doesn't seem to be influencing anyone. The next song on the album is called Power Drunk. It says, God protects us from thoughts in some man's minds. God protects us from the pain he leaves behind. Uh, musically, it's a bit too straight. So if you just listen to the music of this one, I don't find it particularly interesting. It's a pretty standard blues kind of arrangement. But thematically, it reminds me of that song I just mentioned, Rebels. So Rebels is one of my favorite Tom Petty songs, but it can be a kind of uncomfortable one because it's written from the perspective of a southerner 
who has these idolized views of the Confederacy and feels like his life sucks because the South was de defeated so many years ago. And so Power Drunk almost feels like it's singing about these kind of men that, you know, men, uh, there are figures in the world like the singer of rebels who their lives are tied up in these grand narratives and it can make them dangerous. It can make them have potentially reactionary thoughts like nostalgia for the Confederacy, but it's really not about, you know, these individual men. It's about this dark, twisted world that God creates. So after Power Drunk comes uh, Forgotten Man, and this is a term that uh, Petty borrowed from Franklin Roosevelt, uh, referring to people who, you know, needed support uh, as a result of the consequences of the Great Depression. And I feel like it's a nice companion piece to Power Drunk, because Petty's again saying that there are these deeply alienated people in the world, uh, but the answer is not to fight them or to just be frustrated with them, it's to look for a form of their misery that we can relate to, uh, namely, you know, economic suffering of one kind or another, and intervene as Roosevelt did in the Great Depression. It's a memorable, simple kind of song, just in that that chorus is, is very straightforward. Uh, the lyrics are there are pretty simple. They don't tell you too much about that hidden meaning. I had to look that up if you weren't familiar with the phrase, but at very least you'll remember that opening phrase. I feel like a forgotten man, or I feel like a four-letter word. The next song on the album is called Sins of My Youth. Like a lot of these lyrics, it's kind of vague. Uh, this one, it could be about infidelity. And it's as if the singer is tempted to say to his partner, I won't cheat again because I'm old but thinks that that's not a good enough answer and also doesn't want to quite admit to being uh, old. So instead he says, I love you more than the sins of my youth. So rather than, you know, I've just aged out of bad behavior, it's that his relationship with this person is being chosen over bad behavior. And whether that's true or not, you know, that's a, a very loving thing to say. You know, I love you enough for you to change me. The next song is called You Get Me High. Uh, you know, it has a sound that fits the title well. It kind of reminds me of a garage rock kind of feel. The chorus is slow and simple, like something that a stoner is saying where they think they're being profound, but they're actually not saying very much. The next song is called Burnt Out Town. Uh, it's very bluesy, uh, has a great riff on simple drum and harmonica blowing together. And I find the imagery that it juxtaposes kind of interesting. So it goes, This is a burnout town, new emperor, same clothes. They're dancing on glass ceilings while the filthy money flows. You know, the verse makes it unclear if they're actually talking about a small town or a place where, you know, genuinely fancy people live, like New York City. Uh, and, you know, with the reference to the glass ceiling, maybe there's some, you know, intersectionality here. He's talking about the boys club as well. So, you know, there's this Americana tradition of glorifying the small town and, you know, Petty, he, he comes from Gainesville. I, I don't think you'd call that a small town. It's a college town in Florida. But on the one hand, he identifies with rootsy Americana. But on the other hand, he is trying to tell a story that, you know, speaks to America as a whole that isn't just about pitting regions of America uh, at, against each other, but about getting to the heart of moral problems. So. Again, like uh, with uh, Power Drunk and Forgotten People, he's saying there's a lot of angry people out there, let's give them a new deal. And again, in Burnt Out Town, he's saying there's a lot of burnt out towns and it's not, you know, small towns versus, versus big cities. You could be a burnt out town and still be a big city. The final song on the al album is called Shadow People. And it sounds markedly different than the other songs, at least uh, at the beginning with its piano riff, uh, before it does switch back into a more standard blues rock guitar. Uh, there's one lyric that goes, That one's thinking of great art and eloquent words. That one's strapped up on a gun and joined up with the herd. And again, I, I think of that juxtaposition in Burnt Out Town. This lyric could, you know, be in, in the city, uh, you know, at some fancy art gallery, or, I, I mean, I know the herd is a pretty standard uh, metaphor, you know, don't be a sheep, but it obviously has a rural edge to it. And also like Red River earlier on the album, there are vague spooky allusions to Christianity without it necessarily becoming a Christian song or getting, you know, too deep into any sort of faith-specific meaning. Uh, there's another lyric that goes, this one carries a gun for the USA. He's a 21st century man and he's scary as hell because he's afraid. Hell destroys everything he don't understand. 
Uh, so again, it feels like it's singing about the character in Rebels, who's maybe righteously angry, but then comes up with a very bad solution to the problem. Uh, in, the, in the case of that character, Southern nationalism. Uh, in the case of Shadow People, something vaguer, but you know, no doubt of a similar vein. Uh, then he goes, "I'm not that. Le I'm not on the left. I'm not on the right. I feel like, a sh but I feel like a shadow is falling over me." Uh, so, you know, not my favorite lyric on the album because, you know, though I have complex political views and I don't fit in well necessarily with one crowd, I certainly emphatically identify with being on the left. But I think what Petty is saying here is, you know, he's largely made it through his career as someone who's quite apolitical. You know, he was not like Bob Dylan who was perceived as political at the beginning or someone, you know, like Phil Oaks or Billy Bragg or Buffy St. Marie who's really perceived as political throughout uh but now finally with this album which you know would unfortunately be his last album uh he's starting to dip his toes into the water so listening to this album i thought about you know some of the last important public comments tom petty had made i've repeated the song rebels multiple times in this video uh it, it's it has a great musical sound it was one of my favorite tom petty songs but I always felt conflicted about it because, you know, there was a video on YouTube of a live performance with the, uh, with the Confederate flag in the background. And I thought, okay, a lot of people in the South, uh, certainly pre-2015, just sort of took that as a neutral symbol and not pro-slavery. But for someone from the North like me, it still seems hella weird. And I just have to hope it was more important that there were black musicians in Tom Petty's band than that he chose to wave that flag. Uh, but unprompted in 2015, because I suspect most people, you know, not like me, wouldn't have noted that video, he actually pointed out that he had abandoned using the flag years ago, that he'd started out just viewing it, as he said, as the wallpaper of the South, but he eventually came to realize, oh, you know what, this is a political symbol, and I don't want to identify with those kind of politics. And notably at a concert, when a fan threw a Confederate flag up to him, he threw it back down. But then the other thing that stood out uh, when he publicly made those comments, making clear that he distanced himself from that old approach to performing Rebels and really emphasized that Rebels is about a character, it's not emphasizing a good view of the world. He also talked about how, you know, modern day anti-racism can't just be about, uh, you know, fighting the, the overt racism of the Confederate past. It has to be looking at you know, the real oppression that people face today from police brutality and from economic inequality that may be due to direct conscious racism or may just be due to the fact of, you know, how American capitalist society has been set up. So it really seems like with those comments and with this record that Tom Petty, you know, after already having a great career, was really thinking about taking it to the next level and how to be a cautious but a righteous political commentator, and it would be interesting to see what he would have done if he had kept going. Uh, anyway, uh, check out this record. It's not my favorite Petty album, sonically. You know, it's hard to produce great album after great album, and he had many great albums in his younger years, but this is certainly a solid one to listen to, and if one thinks about the lyrics uh, a little bit, they're very compelling in their own right. So check out my own new album, Krabby Starfish and the Herons from Maine. Check out the other videos on this channel, including my interviews with fellow singer-songwriters and other artists. I'm Zach Morgenstern. This is Ludwig von B. See you next time. Mm -hmm.